Hello there, Internet. Vinny D here with another Vinny Vince. Today I just want to talk about something very near and dear to my own heart. Comics, sequential art, the graphic novel, the funny papers, manga, whatever you call it. It's a century-old art form at this point. The simple concept of taking drawings to depict action and words to depict language and then putting them together in panels to depict the passage of time. It's done a lot of things over the years. It's made us laugh, made us cry, made us cheer, and made us think. And yet, and I'm getting to the point of this vent, after all of that, Literature snobs still say comics aren't real books. And the art snobs who say comics aren't real art. Hell, there are even animation snobs who insist that comics are just for people too poor to animate. Of course, lots of other new media have also struggled for legitimacy. Film, for instance, almost as old as comics. But nowadays it's easy to say that film is high art when we've had masters like Stanley Kubrick, Steven Spielberg, and Fritz Lang. The fact that movies are entertainment does not detract from the fact that film is also art. There were plenty of snobs from the 50s and onwards who insisted rock and roll isn't real music. But after the likes of Elvis Presley and Freddie Mercury poured their souls into every note, you cannot deny that rock and roll is true expression. Today, with great indie developers, video games are still going through the same transformation. But more and more, new people are beginning to respect video games as art, with games like Undertale, Portal, Breath of the Wild, games that aren't just interactive entertainment, but also beautiful works of art, and they're being respected as such now. So tell me, why is it, why is it, after a solid century of artists pouring themselves into their work, are comics not real literature? And some of you are probably answering, but I don't think comics aren't real literature. But are you really treating them like that? What you say and what you believe in yourself are two different things. If I were to say I stayed up all night and read this new book cover to cover, you'd say, wow, must have been really good to pour through the whole thing. And I say, oh, it was a comic book. You'd just say, oh. Never mind then. And even we as artists in the comics industry, we internalize that. We often imagine, what if my creation became a cartoon or a major motion picture? But then what's wrong with the media you've chosen? What's wrong with a comic being a comic? I mean, even the late great Stan Lee may have suffered from this. As he said, what he really wanted to do was write a novel. A man who created so much and gave so much to the world, even he was disappointed in, in himself for not making a real book. Oh, by the way, if you do like novels, uh, do check out the Zodiac Legacy when Stan Lee, late in life, did actually write a novel. So maybe it's partially an internalized thing that we comic artists self-depreciate and feed into the perception that our creations aren't true literature. And I'm not saying that's the big solution. Like I said, this is just a vent. But maybe we do need to look internally at ourselves and the fact that we don't believe ourselves to be true writers before we yell at the world for not treating us like real writers. And personally, I always pride myself on the fact that I have written three books. Anti-Bunny Book 1, Anti-Bunny Book 2, and Nail Bat. I finished two of them before I turned 30, and the third before reaching 40. Not everybody can say they've written three books. Even though they are comic books, they are books. I have written them. I started something 
and finished it thrice over. And they're out there in the world to be read. I hope to finish more books. And on the positive side, there's been some big improvements lately. As now, we have literature, as in words, prose, non-illustrated, becoming comics. I just finished reading through some very good uh, graphic novel adaptations of several classic pieces of literature. The manga classics line has been excellent. Anne of Green Gables, I will admit, is a book I would have never read. But as a comic, it goes from this boring little story about an adopted kid out in the boonies to this is adorable. And meanwhile, I also just finished a excellent adaptation of Brave New World and another of 1984. And I could do a whole video comparing and contrasting how those art styles also depict the different takes on totalitarianism, but that's a video for another day. And many people, thanks to manga classics, are finally experiencing Shakespeare in a form they can appreciate, because, sorry lit snobs, you should not read Shakespeare, you should watch it, because Shakespeare was a playwright, he wasn't writing novels, and if you read Shakespeare, you're going to realize this isn't a book, it's a script. In fact, it includes even stage direction. It's not something you're meant to sit down and read. It's something you're meant to experience with all of your senses. But, as not everyone can go to a Shakespearean play, wouldn't the next best thing be to sit down and see it illustrated and given life in pictures and drawings? As panel by panel, the passage of time and movement are expressed. And because of these comic adaptations of classic works of literature, we're getting whole new audiences that would have never read these. And isn't it more important that people encounter these ideas and experience these expressions of the human soul than preserving some idea of the purity of written language? In fact, Studies have shown that children who read comic books experience the same improvements in literacy and intellectual growth as children who read novels. And the fact is, if illustrations in comics make it more likely that children will read, well then, shouldn't they read comics? And I know some of the detractors are going to say, Yes, but comics are for children. You, as an adult, should be reading novels. But why? There are plenty of graphic novels that are also aimed at adult audiences, that express adult ideas. And in our busy, workaholic lives, isn't it better if we're more likely to read, again, if it's presented in a different format, in a comic format, you see, if I'm too busy to read, and only have a little spare time, I could maybe get through one great piece of classic literature a month, if I actually focused and made a point to read it every day. More likely, it would take me several months, because I wouldn't be able to read every day. On and off, having to back up before, because I've lost my place, it might take me a year. But in graphic novel format, I could read a great work of classic literature every single day. I could encounter more great works of literature created for comics to begin with. Transmetropolitan, The Sandman, The Infinity Gauntlet, Usagi Yojimbo, or Berserk. And more so than any other medium, comics are willing to change. They're willing to grow with the times, they're also willing to experiment, fail, and try again. Captain America was punching out Hitler in a time when America was not yet willing to enter the war. Superman smashed the Ku Klux Klan when the Klan was still trying to depict itself as a family organization. The X-Men challenged racial segregation. 
And more recently, Yang, with his twin works, Boxers and Saints, has told us a story of a very important part of history that a certain repressive regime would like to see wiped from all memory. Like it or not, comic books, with their uses of images and text, have integrated themselves into the social consciousness. Today, characters like Superman, Iron Man, Popeye, or Goku are every bit as recognized around the world as, say, Hercules or King Arthur. So then, if you cannot deny that these characters are an ingrained part of our culture, of our collective imagination, that these living characters are now part of our popular mythos, that if I walk into the middle of a street and I yell out, who'd win in a fight, Superman or Goku, you better believe that everyone is going to start arguing, then you cannot deny that sequential art is real art, that comic books are real books, comics are literature. No ands, no ifs, no buts. If you've read a comic, you've read a book. And that's my event for today. This is Vinny D out. Be good.